Hey, what is up guys, my name is Chris, also known as Sisoko. I will be showing you today on how to install a 5M server, keeping it always updated. And lastly, I will show you some very handy tools for you to make your server running experience much smoother and elegant. So yeah, let's dive right into it. So the first step you will need to take is to fire up your browser and hop into 5M.net. After that, click on create your own server and then click on host your own server. This will prompt you to the 5M docs. What I want is to scroll a little bit of downwards and then click on download and install Visual C++ Redistributable 2019. This will make sure we do have all the libraries needed for the 5M server to work on this machine. So after downloading, make sure you install it as well. So the next step is to create our server folder, where the artifacts and the data of the server will be stored. So firstly, create your server folder, and then inside that folder, create two subfolders one named artifacts and the other one named data. Right after creating the folder, we will need to download the artifacts. These are the libraries that 5M created for the server to run. So hop to Google and type 5M artifacts. Just make sure you do select the appropriate OS system that you utilize, as Linux has different artifacts than Windows. Furthermore, down the road, when you land on the site, download the latest recommended build. This will ensure your server will be running at its highest potential level. And oh yes, lastly, don't forget to extract the zip file into your artifacts folder. The next step is to head into the artifacts folder and then proceed by starting the fx server executable file. This will open up a command prompt that your server will be running through, updating you on the state of the server and in any potential errors that might pop up. The executable file will then fire up your browser to link your account. After linking your account with TXAdmin, it will then proceed by asking you to log in with 5M. This is required as TXAdmin is embedded with 5M. So right after logging in with your account, proceed by adding a password. This is only used for backup though. Furthermore, when you have saved your password, a new panel will show up with many tasks. Firstly, you will need to add your server name. Right after it will ask you on what kind of server you want. Popular templates consist of a clean 5M server and a Plum ESX. ESX is a popular framework used by the majority of 5M. The rest of the options below should only be used if you have a specific framework that you would want to use. But for this video, we will be choosing the clean 5M server. Right after choosing the clean server, we need to change the path for the data folder to be read. So the only thing we will need to do is path it through the data folder we created earlier. After setting the path for the data folder, head into the Recipe Deployer. We won't be changing anything there, so proceed by clicking on Next. The next section requires us to add a license key. This key is only obtainable through 5M's Key Master website. The link will be in the description for your ease. So, add your key and then run the recipe. By running the recipe, TXAdmin will create the server for us. And then we will click on save and run. This should completely finish up the server and we should be ready to hop into the game and test everything out. So let's dive into TXAdmin on how it can benefit you and the different type of settings you can change. To access TXAdmin you will need to put the IP address of the server and then follow it up with the port 40120. So as you can see here we have the dashboard. It has information such as player's performance chart, some buttons below to restart, start or stop the server, and the right side it shows all the players online on the server. 
On the players tab, we can see the stats regarding our server's entire lifespan. Furthermore, we have the ability to ban and whitelist players. As you can also see, Live Console just logs the entire server console. We also have the ability to download the logs and even run server commands. The resource tab is quite useful. It gives you information about all the resources in your server and in what state they are. Serverlock, on the other hand, provides you information with player-issued commands. This is very useful to get an idea on what the players are actually doing. The CFG editor gives you the ability to pretty much edit the server.cfg file. Lastly, the settings tab gives you the ability to alter various settings for your server, such as enabling and disabling one sync or server restarts, and even adding custom executable commands. So, let me show you a few useful applications that you should be using for your server. Firstly, Astrograph. This application gives you the ability to quickly search for certain keywords throughout your whole server. The interface is really awesome, so it is a 100% go for me. Secondly, we have Heidi SQL. This application is a database editor. You may view and edit your database with it. I do prefer Heidi because it's very easy to use and it is free compared to Navicat. Thirdly, we have Laragon. Laragon is a tool that allows you to create a MySQL server and an Apache server. The only reason we are not using SAM is because this is a way more user-friendly application. And after one year of using it, I never had any corrupt files or any issues with it. And lastly, Visual Studio Code. VS Code is the best lightweight editor out there that will help you edit your server with this. You may also add cool extensions that will make your coding experience much, much more smoother. So that's it for this video, thank you for taking the time and watching the whole entirety of it. If you have any questions then feel free to comment or even join our discord server to ask us the questions. If you are interested in checking out the store then feel free to. We include high-end resources that enhance the roleplay to its finest level, such as bank robberies, cameras, data terminals and much much more. So adios, bye bye and see you soon.